Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This video is part two of the grammar translation method video. In the first part, if you recall, I dealt with the translation aspect of this method, so-called method. In this video, I will focus on the grammar part. In GTM, grammar translation method, each grammar point was or is listed rules on its use were explained and it was illustrated or it is illustrated by sample sentences. Reading and writing are the major focus. Little or no systematic attention is paid to speaking and listening. Vocabulary selection is based solely on the reading text used and words are taught through bilingual word lists, dictionary study, and memorization. The student's native language is the medium of instruction. It is used to explain new items and to enable comparisons to be made between uh, the foreign language and the student's native language. Although the grammar, uh, grammar translation method often creates frustration for students, it makes few demands on teachers. It is still used in situations, even today, where understanding literary texts is the primary focus of foreign language study and there is little need for uh, speaking knowledge of the language. It is a method for which there is no learning or psychology or education theory. There is no literature that offers a rationale or justification for this method being used in the classroom or any literature that attempts to relate this method uh, to issues in linguistics, psychology or theory. Dave Willis has claimed that there are three major reasons why we can't teach grammar, grammar, grammar. One, it is too complex. Two, there's too much of it. And three, that's not how learners learn. I can add four more to this list. Let's go then. Four, it's too abstract. Five, there are too many irregularities and suppletive forms that do not follow a, a rule that you teach in the classroom. Six, grammar is meaningless without a context. Normally, seven, we can say this is number seven, Normally, in our daily life, we don't use grammar for the sake of using it. It is the servant, it's not the master. We use it as a means of achieving our communicative goals. Hillux and Smith claimed that in 1991, research over a period of nearly 90 years has consistently shown that the teaching of school grammar in isolation has little or no effect on students. Here, what I'm trying to say is not uh, to totally ignore grammar instruction. Grammar is the backbone of the language, so grammar knowledge is essential to be able to use language if, uh, effectively and efficiently. What I'm saying is that grammar should be taught in context, not in isolation. Because without context, it is too abstract to be effectively teachable. Students need uh, clear instruction that connects grammar points with larger communication contexts. And they do not actually need to master every aspect of each grammar point, only those that are relevant to the immediate 
communication task, uh, relevant to their needs, relevant to whatever they want to say, whatever they want to express. Teaching grammar in isolation often results in comparing and contrasting grammar points and coming up with artificial explanations. These explanations confuse learners and cause despair because normally different usages sometimes occur because of the richness of language. We often hear teachers comparing going to and will, and it is always going to versus will. Okay? As if there is a fight between these two, but there isn't. Or, most probably, you have heard must versus have to. Past simple versus present perfect, etc. There are so many couples that are in fight in language, you can't even imagine if you adapt a uh, uh, if you adapt the grammar translation method. Now, don't forget that elocutionary act is the speaker's intention or purpose to communicate. So, when you come up with an explanation like going to is used for something that the speaker has already decided, but will is used for something that the speaker decides just at the time of speech doesn't make much sense because we don't know what the speaker wants to say. Here, of course, the speaker is the student. So why are we confusing our students with such uh, comparisons or contrasts, I should say? These detailed grammatical analysis can only work for advanced level students, highly competent students, maybe at C1 or C2 level. Long and detailed explanations may satisfy us as the teacher, but they do not mean much to learners. In fact, all these explanations result in bored disaffected, uh, disaffected and demotivated students who cannot produce any meaningful messages or use the language in context. Scholars commonly assert that all the time spent teaching grammar in isolation and practicing it by completing exercises has been largely wasted. As I've stated before, our national curriculum also discourages the uh, use of GTM. If you want to learn more about it, about our national curriculum, please watch the related videos on our channel. You can see them here. I will talk about how to teach grammar in the coming videos. So, uh, yes, I have just claimed that we shouldn't teach the grammar like we do in GTM, but how should we teach it? We will deal with it later. Well, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Wish you all the best. Bye-bye.